Hey everybody, this is Rido, and we're back to Dicey Dungeons. So I'm looking at the design of these dice characters, and it's interesting how there really couldn't have been a different way in which these characters could have been designed for the layout of the pips on the dice. Like, sure you could possibly swap the six to the bottom instead of having the six on top and the one at bottom. Uh, but the two and five being on the sides kind of makes some sense. Nothing is quite perfect. The five has a pip in the middle where one arm would come out, but the two doesn't have a pip in the middle, and that always would be the case because it's always uh, evens and odds paired together. And then the four and the three... Uh, with the four being in the back and the three being in the front and thus the eyes being three pips is kind of the only way that could have ever worked. You could certainly have animated it differently but yeah. There's no reason why you would do it differently. That works about as good as anything else. Okay. That was kind of a pointless intro. Let's just do Worse Than a Curse. We're going to start with um, Venus Flytrap and lose 2 max HP when we level up. Uh, you seem pretty tough. If you need all that health now, you'll find without it. Interesting. And we have like a new background now. And now entering battle again, the warrior. Who somehow is still trying. So, I guess we're at 24. Venus Flytrap restores plus 2 health. But, hmm. Well, you can't really win at 24, can you? So. I don't think there's really a different decision to make here. Combat roll, to re roll, re roll, re roll. D6, which is store 2 health. That doesn't do anything because we're at full health. <clears throat> so, so far I'm confused as to what your strategy really would be on this. It really just seems like there is a danger and nothing else other than a danger. Let's see, do that much, do that much. Now I'm at 24. I'm gonna level up so that should increase my health by two, but instead it's been decreased by two. We got an extra dice. Hmm. Sticky hands running away. Let's take on the pirate first. Hmm. So, I, I'm very confused here as to what, what is your strategy? It doesn't seem like it's really giving you one. <laughs> Just maybe skip leveling up because leveling up's a bad thing and just race to the end. I mean, I guess that's the general idea that you're going for. <laughs> Hmm. Let's re-roll this, this, this. Do two damage to restore two damage doesn't make any sense. So just win. Bump dice value plus one. 
Hmm. Well, the, the lucky thing is... Sticky Hands goes first, but all he has is stealing money and running away. Double next action, I can try and get a six here. Ah, well that did not work well. Bump that, I guess. Then do this, do this in the turn. So if he steals a coin from me, do I get two coins back if I defeat him? Or am I trapped? Right, roll Fury and restore four that way. And then we'll do three there. And then the turn. He's not going to succeed at running away. Then you bump this, and then we'll get health back up. Beat you later, gladiator. So you do get two coins that time, but then I also screwed up. Yeah, I'm not sure what the strategy is supposed to be here. Let's see. Bump that. Roll that. Roll that. Six damage. Five shield. Roll that again. In the turn. Okay, three, bump this to six, get two health back, do three poison, do I want to do two damage, to add shield, Yeah, I think that's probably worth it. Crystals, potentially to increase health even more, which, if anything, almost certainly is what you would need this round. Yeah, and there's just no way you're not going to do all the fights. If this is the one episode in which you're not supposed to fight, uh, uh, I'll be shocked. Okay, let's roll that. Roll that. Do that. Do that. Roll that, bump that. And do that. Bump this to do this, so we have like 7 damage, and then I'm going to do this and not take any damage to do 6 damage, 
I'm gonna take this to not take any damage. And two and one poison doesn't win, but I'll stick with it just to save time. Okay. So we need to just roll a six or a five if we can get really lucky. Place this one here and place that there. <laughs> Spatula flipping a dice upside down is an interesting thought, certainly. Instead of potentially bumping a dice. Although I really think shield is the best bet here. Venus Flytrap upgraded would give us 3 health, Claw would increase the max bump with 2 uses, and Shield would just be plus 1 shield. Let's see what our other options would be. Spatula flip upside down multiple times, Healing Crystal, so only 1 use per turn. Hmm. Okay. Bump plus honestly feels like it's the best move. But I'm gonna go with Venus Flytrap first. Yeah. It definitely though feels like the only way you turn this around is to like have something that can give you a lot of health and something that can give you just a massive amount of um, Shield. Hmm. Let's see. Let me break. It's ready. Do that one. Do that one. Five. Bump. Here we activate this that much, and that much, and then get four shield. Hmm. If anything, I think the strategy would be to get shield bash up and going, build up a massive amount of shield and then do a shield bash amount of damage. There's just no way to avoid fighting these characters, so... Yeah, there's... Not anything... To really do... If I could avoid fighting everybody and just run to the final boss fight, there might be an argument to doing that. just rolling for a big number. We didn't get it. Hmm. 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 Let's just re-roll this. 
this, this, and activate our fury to fill our health back up. Well, it didn't even activate twice because you won on the first hit, and I guess that's something to learn. Also, I guess it didn't really matter too much. Nightstick shocks the enemy reusable on an even. Does enough amount of damage. Broadsword does damage plus two. We have money, so we might consider doing like a taser build. I assume that there isn't some other element to this where if I didn't do a taser build or or if I didn't spend all my money I might get a different offering here as far as equipment goes yes I could go with healing crystals instead of shield and then or I could do two taser attacks instead of shield and we have a super version of this dryad and yes we cannot walk past it if I just fight the super dryad and then skip to the fifth floor that would save me leveling up hmm Yeah. Let's see, do this. Bump this. Do this. Roll this. Do this. And the thing about a Super Dryad is I think it just has more attack. Then the rest of these. There we go. Yeah, I don't think it has more attack actually, I think it has more health. Four poison. Than one damage. Poison, I think, bypasses your healing. So, yeah, I did take some damage here, but not a lot. I'm at 17 of 18. That is still a low amount of health. Yeah, and I guess the, the idea is you just gotta either commit to skipping two fights or you've gotta take more options and just hope. And I guess I'm just hoping. Hmm. Okay. Bump of five to a six. Activate fury. Restore health. And then take shield should I take two damage no let's just end the turn now hmm. Hmm. okay heal bump Six shield, which is maybe too much. Reroll, reroll, reroll. Hmm. Hmm. 
See, that does like 9 damage to me, so... I'm in a bad position there. I'm gonna just re-roll this and do this and save my throw. Maybe this time I'll weave myself longer legs. Ah, uh, it's been great to be made of wicker. You should try it. Iron shield versus hammer. Okay, it's stupid. Whatever. We'll we'll do it. We're going all shock all the time here. Shock on an even. Reusable. Six shock there. Shock on this. Have we just straight up committed to all shock all the time enough that we wouldn't want to see this item? See, if there was like an achievement for beating the game with a certain low amount of health, I might consider fighting this guy. But for the first time ever, I think you, the right move is to do this. If we go down here and fight this, because we have to. 31 to... To... 8.15. So... We'll roll this. Roll this. Roll this. So we're hoping for... A 6. He has four dice, so if we do a fury and do ten damage and two shocks, then one more shock, then one more shock, then three damage. Hmm. That's interesting. Why is it only two? That should have been four shocks. Is two the maximum that he could take because he has four dice? Alright, well. You store health with two of that. Do six damage, inflicts one shock. Yeah, these are all shock actions. Shield bash would have been helpful. Last stand is an interesting one. Repeat the next action. We, with one more fight, can upgrade an equipment, um, and Lightning Rod might have been something to think about other times, but not this time. Alright. Two-handed does that damage and curses. Okay. So. Roll for five. Even, even. Do we want to get rid of the five? Okay. Three damage here. Oh, this only does its shock on six damage. Come. I come to see. Okay. He only needs one shock 
more though because he only has two attacks, so it'd be kind of pointless to shock a third time. Nine damage. Definitely showing its limitation there, also. There, two damage there, no shock there. But I've just lost. Hmm. Okay, start again. Try it a second time. I think I generally understand what the strategy is now. It is giving us the opportunity to run and only run. And so we just have to take advantage of that. And not worry about having items or equipment and simply just be set up. Now, inherently, there is something weird about this in that you're not going to get the extra dice, but if you don't get equipment, I guess you don't have a use for the extra dice anyways. Um, so, yeah, it kind of feels like there's just no strategy at all here. Like, you get your limit break, you do this to try and heal a little bit, you level up and reduce your health and get full health. You get an extra dice at that point. I have two. Everything here would cost three. So... It probably is worth it to take on this next fight. In that case. There's a possibility this guy would give me Could be a six, but odds are low. It's possible this baby squid fight will give me a piece of equipment also. I guess we are just mostly looking for the biggest pieces of equipment we can get because we're going to not play a lot of fights. And I, I suspect we'll almost certainly have a full amount of equipment by we by the time we get to the boss even if we do run as quickly as possible One big piece of equipment or two small pieces of equipment. And yeah, there's an upgrade. And I'd like to consider getting the upgrade, but maybe not. Let's do this. Then bump this up to do this and this. And then the turn. If we could pick a shield build, obviously would 
help, but you can't pick. So, yeah. It would be just 100% dumb luck. Restore to my health with fury, sure. Do that. Then do this and do this. I don't want to limit break at this point. And getting four more shield wouldn't, I think, do anything for us. So let's just win. Add more shield. Or spike shield. Hmm. Hmm. I guess we'll take the spike shield as an option. And then none of these are useful as far as what's what I want to buy. numbers until we get where we want five damage here I could do four damage here or I could do five shield let's do five shield to start with then bump this then play this and in the turn. Dice are on fire. Bump that. Do I want to get four shield? Probably for two. Do I want to reroll this? Possibly not, but I did anyways. <clears throat> Let me break again to heal. Win. Another bump. Another heal. And I do want that upgrade, so I'm gonna fight. Okay. Five shield. Start by rerolling this. Five shield, six damage, five there in the turn. Hmm. Six damage, blind two dice. You know what, just throw a blind out there, throw a blind out there, and then re-roll this, and then do that. Hmm. Hmm. 
I'll fail. Reroll this. Reroll this. Bump this to a six. Activate Fury. Once again, we've leveled up and we've gotten an extra dice. So. Buckler would cost less. Spike Shield would lose its damage requirement. The only other thing we have is Bump. Buckler being a little too cheaper. I don't think it's really going to change much where Spike Shield being Spike Shield Plus would help. And I think, frankly, it helps more than it might seem since we are just in this dire situation. Right, so level 3, level 4, let's fight the level 3. Super enemy. Oops. Well, whatever. So now we can do six damage of fire. We can bump this to do six damage there. And we can do that to get shield. Now we have a whole bunch of frozen things, which we'll just re-roll. Okay. Six plus two health. Four damage there. And one there. It definitely still feels like there's just a high, high chance of losing. Like four, three, three. Four damage here to win. So I'm gonna need to eat this health. Okay. Oh, we just ran into a fight with a rotten apple. We've never seen a rotten apple before. It was weird that there wasn't a third enemy here, but that makes sense. Reduce health by half. His health or my health? Either one may not matter too much. Let's see. Start by getting rid of the smallest ones. Okay, bump. Okay. That can help us. Three shield or do we play all three to get four shields? I guess overall you would make more progress if you had done it the other way, but four shields now on the first turn. Hmm. Yeah, that was actually totally unnecessary. If anything, I'd say the Rotten Apple as a character is set up to let me just build up my health back up. Let's see. Because he can only do one damage, but then reduce my health by half, so. Yeah. That's where the problem is going to come in. Hmm. 
Hey, hey, why is a dice game... Why is a dice like an apple? They both have pips, do you see? I imagine a lot of people not immediately familiar with the idea of dice having pips. Shovel, weakening as an attack. And yes, you cannot take that deal. Okay. So, we have to take on the snowman, we have to take on the weather lady, and we have to take on the ghost. The hope is that that won't level us up and that we can somehow survive all of that. Which, I mean, it's not crazy that we would survive all of that. It's just a little weird. You definitely aren't getting the help of the extra HP going up. Uh, health refills might help you a little, but probably by not a significant enough amount to counter the way everything else is going. Okay. So bump that to a six to heal. Do two damage. Plug the other two. Undoubtedly, this is how you get the achievement for rolling a certain number of ones in a single turn. Is because people are freezing your dice to make you roll ones. Okay. Just bump that up. That did not play out particularly well. And we've lost again. So like third attempt. We are playing in relax mode, right? Yeah. So this would be insanely difficult if we weren't playing in relax mode. So I have to just assume the trick here is to not do anything. Just win the game. Just run through every fight as fast as possible. Don't take any side decisions that would take you to an upgrade or anything else. I could have potentially rerolled for some health upgrades there, but that doesn't matter. <clears throat> if you can't afford to purchase something too bad, If you don't have a lot of dice, if you don't have a lot of items, too bad. I don't see a strategy here that is really any different than a shield bash st strategy. Ooh, giving him plus one dice is definitely a nightmare scenario. Good show, you and your chunks really are making still progress with this fighting lark. Okay. 
a mimic. Yep, that was too good to be true. So, hmm. They seem like they're going to enjoy throwing things at you. in my guy every time, isn't he? Uh, this is going to go badly. Oh, that changed his attack. His attack changed. That's interesting. Just try and heal. So you do that just to heal. Take the health. And we have three things, so I guess the question would be Burn a dice. Could that possibly help me? Or do a certain amount of damage? Or freeze people? I think you go with Claw of those options. And then we just have to skip everything else. Why did I reroll the four? I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Do that much. Do that much. In the turn. I'm just saving the fury until I can refill my health around that. Poison. It may be a case that the jazz music, even though it is a very high tempo song here, is kind of lulling me into a stupor. Yeah. Helping me fall asleep a little bit more. I still feel like Spike Shield is the best move, but I'm going to take Iron Shield this time. And Crystal Sword, do three times the damage, potentially doubling that up. Leaving the health because you can't eat it anyways, moving on to the next floor. And yes, we will do that. And we have to do Super Stereo Head. I wonder if we start getting to le episode 4 or 5 levels and they straight up start to... Um, do massive amounts of superhero uh, minions that you're fighting. If they're, they would like potentially be all super enemies. Okay, so I'm gonna do four shields, six damage. 
in the turn. And I can't do a triple crystal sword, which I could double for a massive amount of damage. So what we want to do is reroll the smallest number, then reroll the smallest number, reroll the smallest number, and let's see, 15 plus 5 would be 20. So we will just win here. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Whip. It's not something we can use. Hmm. We roll the smallest number. We roll the smallest number. We roll the smallest number. Add three shield, do three damage in the turn. Do three damage, lock one dice. Now two dice are locked. Okay. 1530 would win, so if I can just get a five. And then activate Fury. And then do 15 damage. We now have an extra dice. And we can't trade that for Toxic Ooze. So we have to move on to the next floor. And we can skip one fight here. But we are going to have to fight three characters. And so the, the question I guess to ask would be, is the boss fight possibly on this against something that's incredibly weak? Like one health, potentially? That might be the case. It might not. This loud bird is also going to be irritating. Because if he can get a dodge each turn, or silence an enemy, silence me. Let's see. Three damage there. Five damage here. Or five shield here. I don't think I can win here. I'm just gonna... He's just gonna dodge it each turn. Unless he can just... Unless dodge stopped working. For some reason. That would only do 2 damage, or 10 damage, I would need to do 30 damage. So this may be very much just a fight that goes on forever. I could do 12 damage right now, but I would have to do this to unlock my fury, and I need to take 6 HP damage first, so I think I have to stop using my shield ability.
Yeah. I think I just have to stop using my shield ability and let him do six damage. And then get really, really lucky. Let's just end the turn and not even do anything, because he loses the dodge after that turn anyways. Dodge damage wasn't able to silence. Fury's not charged. I can possibly do what? Nothing. We're still not ready yet. We need one more HP. Whatever. One more turn. Let him do more damage to me. Okay. Limit break happened. We have our five. So we place this here and this here. He doesn't even have a dodge right now. So, if Fury, activate this next, and then we do 15 damage twice. That was incredibly lucky win. And if these last two characters have anything that possibly can hurt me in that way, I'm going to be in trouble. And I basically need to decide whether I want to upgrade my health. Make crystal sword smaller. Or add shields. Plus one. What, what could I bring back? Two damage attacks if I made crystal shield smaller, which might be useful. Hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll make Crystal Shield smaller, although we should have really looked at this first, just to make sure that that wasn't something we were going to go with. Right. Now we've got to just be really careful here. Three damage roll lower value. Do this, and then re-roll that one, I guess. Re-roll that one. Do that. And then re-roll that. And then four shield. And just hope that works probably doesn't. I'm one short, so probably best to just get five shields at the moment and not risk re-rolling and getting a lower number. Okay. 
I guess you just reroll this. Restore health here with the six. And then crystal sword for fifteen. Hmm. What sucks is we're gonna level up again, whether we want to or not. This is only gonna give me three health anyways. Right. Now what was the bounty hunter's ability? He borrows your equipment out of or he does four damage plus extra damage each use. Okay. That and that. Then we can just re-roll for that. Now he's giving himself shields. Hmm. Hmm. And he stole my weapon, which does open up the door that he'll potentially steal my other weapons. And that could be a problem. It is, I think, too high of a problem. So I'm just going to use Crystal Sword now and do 12 damage. That way he can't steal it from me. At ho ideally. Six damage. Okay. Three there. Give me a six. No such luck. Oh, so he can steal items even if I've already used them. So I've lost once again. Well, we've hit a weird point here. Yes, at any point we could just like edit the progress of the game and we may literally have to do that uh, because yeah, this is not good as far as worse than a curse. We've spent the entire hour trying that. Next time we'll try uptick and then see um, if that's more doable. It's starting to feel like a lot of the rules are kind of crazy and impossible to beat. Although you choose or you lose, I won on the first try. So maybe it's just that one. Or maybe there's a strategy there that I'm not understanding. Um, honestly, it just feels like you just have to be a little lucky. And then that has been the case is that these episodes don't feel particularly game tested or balanced in any way. And your success is going to come down to just a level of luckiness. Alright, well, that's going to be it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want to further follow me on any social media sites, there's a bunch of links down below. And if you want to support me further, there's a link to Patreon, or you can friend me on Steam and get me a game off my wish list. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.